And if you're in the East Coast, this will be music to your ears. It's not going to be as cloudy as it has been. Charlie and Nina. Oh, good news, Carol, because they've been feeling a bit left out of the good weather, haven't they? Absolutely, yes. It's been chilly. Thanks, Carol. 8.15 the time now. So, after more than 30 years in the saddle and 3,000 wins to his name, 3,000 3, wins, 000. Frankie de Tori is retiring as a jockey at the end of this season. He's had a special relationship with the Derby over the years, winning it twice, and will take part in his final event at Epsom on Saturday. Let's have a look back at his first win there in 2007. Towards the inner Acapulco begins to give way. Dettori improving on the green colours. An authorised down the outside. Salford Mill is staying on Eagle Mountain from a long way back. Kid Mambo's given a bold sight. Authorised shaken up with Acaline. Then Soldier of Fortune, Locarno. Eagle Mountain and Salford Mill. Dettori's date with destiny. Will it be realised? Authorised leads the Derby field by two lengths. Locarno in second. Eagle Mountain and Acaline. But Dettori is clear in the Derby for authorised. Five or six lengths. He's had to wait 15 years, but a blitzing performance by at the line authorised will give Frankie the Tory his first derby by five lengths. Very pleased to say that Frankie's with us on the sofa this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you. Just first of all, when you see a race like that, jockeys, do you remember every step? I mean, are you that right one, there yes. in the moment? That one, yes. Listen, I rode probably 20,000 races in my life, so I don't remember them all, but. The big ones you do, and uh, yeah, watching that again reminds me of uh, yeah, well, a great day. And how many attempts was it in order to secure it? That was my 15th time, wow. and uh, it was more of a relief because you know it was it is our biggest race. Uh, when, when you start as a jockey, that's the race you want to win. So the, uh, the Epsom Derby, like I guess tennis players like Wimbledon or F1 driver Monaco, so he's the one you want to win. And it just goes to show it doesn't happen overnight, 15 yeah. or 10. This is it, this is it. This is it. Uh, this is the, the trophy, yeah, this is the trophy that uh, the owner gets to, to, to win. And this represents the famous Tottenham Corner. This horses are galloping downhill. And uh, this is what it's all about. This is the race will make stallions and, uh, and champions. And tell us about this weekend at Epsom for you. Special place yes. for you. And for all jockeys, mm. but this will be your last time there. This is my so how are, what, how are the emotions going to be? Or do you just lock in? It's just another race. What, what's going to be going on in the Dottori head? Well, basically, um, October 21st will be my last race in England. Uh, and this uh, Saturday will be my last derby. At the moment, as a professional, I'm focusing on trying to win it. Um, I'm not thinking too far ahead. Um, and you know it will be when we come to the end of the season it'll be emotionally tears and stuff but at the moment I've got uh, a good horse on a rest on Saturday uh, and like I said it's my last derby so I'm going to try to make it count and your fourth favourite is that a decent position to be in? yes I mean this year is wide open I mean yeah. there is not standout horse in the race um, I mean the first four in the betting uh, uh, I, I respected a good run I don't want to jinx it too much. <laughs> I keep my fingers crossed. How does it work, though, Frankie, in, in the jockey world? Where you, you're a superstar in your sport and you're coming to the end of your career. Does that mean that every other jockey is going, I want to beat him once at least? In my, does it sort of up the stakes in that respect? I would say a lot of people are pleased to get rid of me, actually. I bet. <laughs> but he is, uh, you know, I've had over 30 years of uh, professional and I loved it. Uh, horses, my love yeah. is, you know, those got, uh, they're super fast and they got, uh, they're very sensitive. So uh, I've never been going to be too far away from the horse itself. Uh, the derby is unique. Uh, so I expect people to watch it on Saturday. It will be my last one, but it's, uh, it's the best we can offer. I mean, it's going to be emotional for lots of your fans as well, isn't it? I think we've got some footage of your last win. Let's have a little look. And I mean, you say that you're looking ahead not too far. It's important yeah. not to get emotional at this point. But inevitably, there will be thoughts creeping in now about this huge transition in your life. Yeah, it is. You know, listen, uh, the, uh, time is going really fast at the moment. Yeah. I've only got less than five months. Um, and that's the reason I announced it, because I want to give everybody a chance to come and see me or also to give to, to, to see my last goodbyes. It will be my last one at Epson. Then we got Royal Asco coming up and then we got the summer and I'll be traveling around the world as well. So 
It's a lot of uh, goodbyes, and I want to uh, be happy about it. I don't mm. want to be sad about it. Look, I'm 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 not spring chicken. I'm I'll be 53 in, in December. So, and I, 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 as a sportsman, I've had an, an amazing career in life. So, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, I, that doesn't mean I'm gonna die. Hopefully not. But there, <laughs> there, there will be there will be another life after racing. And uh, will there be so things let's you'll enjoy. be able to do that you couldn't do before as a jockey? Like what things will you indulge? In? I like to travel the world. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, you know, I have traveled the world, but yeah. I went from one, one race course to another. But you know, it's a lot of places that I like to go and you know and and take my time doing it. And will you okay. be eating more? Will you have a bit yeah. of a freer diet? I yeah, that's that's a good question. I, I'm. I'm Quite a, a, a fitness fanatic, so I think I will be keeping my gym up. But I will be able to eat more pasta. More like how, hard is it, how much harder has it got as you got older? I think the, the whole the weight thing and the the strength and the weight and the muscles and the and it's, it's become. Sport. I'll be honest with you. It's be, it, as you get older, it becomes easier because you, you get uh, used to it. And, and with nutritionists that we have nowadays, we know exactly what to eat and not to eat. What. When I first started, we we and I, I lived on a on a, a Twix and a diet coke, but now now with protein and carbs and the good fats, the bad fat. I mean, there's a lot, so so much uh, uh, technology nowadays, and uh, I I found it easier than before. Frankie, some sports stars, I and mean, you could pick any number of sports like tennis. I know you know people like Roger Federer coming to an end of their careers. There's almost like a moment they can pinpoint when they they're, they're sort of almost a realization, or someone says to them, "Was it was there one of those for you?" Well, I'll be honest with you, and it's, it, you know, my heart wants to carry on because I, I love horses, I love the competition, but my brain is telling me, "Look, you know, you've had a great career. It's time to stop and start something else because I want to be young enough to 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 be able to start something else, and uh, you know, you you can carry on, but but then." Obviously, it is a dangerous sport, and, and as you get older, and you you do have a fall, you 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 crumble like a like a piece of glass. How much of you has been broken over the years? Well, a lot, a lot. Perhaps not as much as a jump jockey, but pretty much everything. That's yeah, hard, yeah. though, mate. Letting the head outrule the heart, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. And, and find the right moment. You know, I'd, I wanted to stop when I'm still competitive enough that. People remember me when I was good, not when I'm, you know, sitting on the bench. Well, right. speaking of remembering you when you were good, which you clearly still which are. Still are. <laughs> how about that record-breaking day yes. when you just won everything? What yeah. What was happening that day? That was a uh, '96. Got no idea. Fujama Crest. This is the, the seventh winner. This is the horse what made me famous. So it's, you won every single race. That every day. race, yes. And that horse, Fujama Crest, I actually when he retired, I bought him. You know, everybody has a pet, like a Labrador or a cat. I got him as a pet and I put him in a field in my house and he lived with me for the next 20 years and he had a wonderful life. And, uh, you know, I, I loved him as as much as anyone's pet. So he, good old Fujama Crest, he had, he had a f fabulous life after racing. That bond must be such a big part of it. Yes. And 100%, you know, that, that's, you know, most of the people in racing, we actually do it because we love the animal itself. The the, the thoroughbred or the horse is, is an amazing horse. Never mind he's super fast, but he's also super sensitive. He feels he feels your moods and he, wow. he fills you with happiness as well. On that theme, Frankie, about people who love animals, you'll be well aware of the protests that yes. have been involved about animal welfare and all those things. How, how do you resolve that? I'll be honest with you, I don't I don't really follow the politics. Everybody's got issues about a lot of things in this day and age. I just hope that uh, Things gonna go smooth on Saturday. We can get off in a racing without uh, creating any problems to anyone or put anybody in in, in danger. So let's hope that uh, protest, protesters don't don't impede this kind of beautiful event. You are uh, very generous in your praise of other jockeys and people who came before you, and a lot of people, certain jockeys' names. Uh, sort of leap out of the sport that yours does. A lot of people who don't follow racing know your name, and they also know Lester Piggott's That's name, right. don't they? And he was he was kind of like a mentor for you. Wasn't yeah, he? I mean Lester. Lester was, uh, oh. you know, Lester is uh, is the greatest jockey he's, he's ever lived in 300 years of horse racing, and you know he's he won nine derbies. I mean, I only managed to win two. And you know it's been a year since he's passed away, so uh, we're going to remember him on Saturday because when you when you're thinking about the Epsom Derby, you think about Lester Piggott. Uh, he was uh, an amazing person, 
and uh, it'll be greatly missed, but we're going to remember him on Saturday. You can see in those yeah. pictures how genuine that relationship is, how close you are. Um, you don't have to be a huge horse racing fan to know about your famous dismount. <laughs> Disappointed to learn it's not actually yours. No, I stole it, actually. I, I did, uh, when I was a young boy, a teenager, I stole it. Wait! I went, to, I, went to, <laughs> I went to America and this famous jockey called Angel Cordero used to do it. And I kind of, I kind of stole it from him. And I brought it to Europe, and uh, yeah, it's part of uh, what I do after I win a race, so it's a bit of fun. People like it. Well, it was, absolutely. Thank it's not so good on my knees and ankles. I was going to say. Ankles. Um, can I ask you one thing? Yeah, I know they're completely different sports, but uh, jump, jump yes. jockeys, did you ever try it? Did I, you ever I actually did, have a go? I did try it. I did try it once. It was a charity race back in the day and I've never been so frightened in my life, I'll be honest with you. So I'll stick to the flat so I don't have to jump anything, but I've got to take my heart off. I mean, those guys are unbelievable, I mean, courageous yeah. because, uh, you know, all it takes to clip one little fence and you somersault. So it's and very just good. looking ahead to this, this weekend, how many rides have you got in all? I've got uh, two Friday, we've got the Oaks and the Coronation, and Saturday I've got three, the first three. And uh, obviously the derby is the, the most important and fingers crossed, last one, we get the job done. Well, you, you wouldn't should, bet against you. You would, would you? not. Except some people will, but uh, yeah, no, that's the nature of betting. Lovely to see you this Me too. Morning. Thank you for coming in. Thank enjoy you. your final run and enjoy that pasta beyond I the... I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Bye you. And Morning Live is on BBC One at quarter past nine. It's Gabby and Rav this morning. How are you doing? Good morning. 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 Oh, you've got a legend there. He usually <laughs> does the jump on the sofa. I hope he might do that for you. It'd be great. <laughs>